Hey folks, so welcome back to another lesson and today we're going to be looking at magnetic fields. So we're going to move on from electric fields and look at magnetic fields and there's a few starter videos that I want to show you. Watch the demo of the iron fillings around the current carrying wire. What do you notice? Watch the demo of the compass around the current carrying wire. What do you notice when the current is on? What do you think will happen if the current is reversed? Now, I'll leave these two links for you in Teams so you can access them yourself. But have a wee watch the video and think about this as you do so. OK, now for magnetic fields, we want to be able to describe the magnetic field around a magnet and current carrying wire and apply the right hand grip rule and the left hand rule. And um, I'll probably do a separate video showing you how to use these two uh, quite weird sounding rules. So first of all, a wee bit of kind of history. How are forces transmitted? Now, before I go any further, I've labelled the um, slides here with a number because there are quite a lot of video links for this lesson. So each video link will correspond to the slide number here so you know which one we're talking about. So in the 19th century, the force field was proposed. Now, this is nothing sci-fi, but it's really this idea of gravitational fields, electric fields, and magnetic fields. And these are really how physicists were able to explain action at a distance. Because if you think about it, if you hold two magnets close together or a certain distance apart, they can attract and repel each other. So how do you go about explaining that? And one way to do that was to use this idea of fields. And as we move on later on in the, the unit, we'll look at quantum mechanics. And there, uh, there are theories which suggest that a mediating particle is associated with each force field. And it's this mediating particle which transmits the force. And the fancy name for that is a gauge boson. But we'll look at that in a bit more detail later on. But for just now, we're going to focus on the idea of fields. So you could call this bit field theory. So what do we know about magnetic fields? Well, magnetic fields are similar to electric fields, except they have a north and a south pole instead of a positive and a negative. They always occur in pairs and are called dipoles, i.e. we can't isolate a north or a south pole by itself. So what that means is, if I was to take this magnet down here and then suddenly chop it in half, each half would still have a north pole and a south pole, a north pole and a south pole. And it doesn't matter if you keep chopping this in half, you would always have a north and a south pole. Now, if you ever look at the diagrams of planet Earth, you should hopefully know that there's a magnetic field around the Earth. And that's actually really important for life on Earth because the magnetic field uh, protects it from harmful rays, as we'll see later on. But what you'll notice is that the field lines don't match up with the field lines for magnets, because the North Pole actually has the same field lines as a South Pole, and the South Pole has the same field lines as a North Pole. And the reason for this is because which direction do compasses point to? Well, compasses always point north, but remember, it can only do that if it's being attracted by a south pole. So the north pole is actually a south pole or a magnetic south pole, and the south pole is actually a magnetic north pole. That isn't the only poles that are on Earth, and um, this wee video clip here will show you the three, I think if I remember correctly, different types of poles that the Earth have. So if you're really into your ge geography, or if you just want to see a little bit more than what I'm showing you, I highly recommend you watch the video. It's a fantastic one by minute uh, physics, if I remember correctly. Now, let's look at magnetic fields in a little more detail and see how we can use them in physics. So first of the things is that magnetic fields or B fields are induced, which means they are kind of created when a charge moves through a conductor. Now, where might that happen? Well, it happens all the time because uh, a moving charge could be, say, uh, a current, and a current will move through a conductor, a piece of wire. So there are actually magnetic fields around wires all the time. And if you watch one of the videos in the starter, you'd have seen that. Now, one of the things we need to know about this magnetic field around the wire 
is which direction it's going. And before I explain any more, let's just give you a diagram to kind of make it easier to visualize what's happening. So ignore that just now, and let's just focus on the diagram. So you've got the Y here, and we've told you that the direction of the current is going up the way, and so there's a magnetic field around that wire. Now, one of the things we have to figure out is which direction is that magnetic field going? Because the direction of that magnetic field is really important because that will decide how that magnetic field interacts with other magnetic fields uh, and charged particles, as you see later on. So the way we work out the direction of the magnetic field is by using this thing called the right hand grip rule. And what I'll probably do is do a separate video showing you how to use the right hand grip rule because it's not always obvious using diagrams. But the basic idea is that if you hold your hand and it's your right hand, because it's called the right hand grip rule, and if you hold your hand in the same position as a cartoon where the thumb points up the way and you let your fingers naturally curl, then what you do is you line your thumb in the same direction as the current. So here the current is pointing upwards, so your thumb point upwards. And then the curl of your hands will actually give you the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case here, the magnetic field is curling anti-clockwise. And you can imagine if the current was going down the way, your thumb would point down the way, so then the magnetic field will go uh, clockwise. And that's essentially the right hand grip rule. Now, because the direction of the current is very important, we have to have a way of representing it in our diagrams. Because remember, our diagrams are two dimensional, but we're really talking about a three dimensional system here. So one way to represent that is to think about current as being like an arrow, and the flight of the arrow is the same as the path of the current going through the wire. So for example, we have two wires here. So imagine each of these circles is a wire. Now, if we see the dot, this is like seeing the head of the arrow. And if we see the head of the arrow, it must be approaching us, getting closer to us. So we know the current is coming out of the page. That's how we define this notation here. Similarly, if we see the cross inside the wire, then the cross represents the fletchings, that's the feathers on the arrow. So there we know the arrow is flying away from us because we see the back end of the arrow. So we say that the current is going into the page. So to recap, if you see a circle, that usually represents the wire. A dot in the wire means the current is going out of the page. A cross in the wire means it's going into the page. And this is a very common notation used by many physics courses. So charge is moving out of the page and charge is moving into the page. And I would recommend you make a wee copy of these diagrams here. Okay, so using a right hand grip rule, we can then put it all together. And if you use your right hand, point your thumb according to the direction of the arrow. So if it's going in the way, your hand will curl clockwise. If it's going out the way, it will curl anti-clockwise. Now, uh, where does this come in handy? Well, if you watch the wee demo of the electromagnet, this shows you how we can get a magnetic field around a piece of wire and make it into a magnet. And you might have remembered doing this in third and fourth year where we made electromagnets and tried to pick up as many paper clips as possible. Okay, now, why do we want to know this? Well, um, one of the applications of this is if you've got magnetic fields, you know that they can either repel or attract each other. So if you set it up properly, you can actually get it to move. And if you can get it to move, you've basically invented an electric motor. Okay, so if we place this in a magnetic field, a force will be applied to the current carrying wire. And the reason for that is because the current carrying wire has a magnetic field around it. So two magnetic fields, you're going to get attraction or repulsion. And that's the basic idea of how uh, an electric motor works. Um, and if you watch this YouTube video, it will show you the movement of a wire when it's put in a magnetic field, when it has some current going through it as well.
Now, I can't show you in detail, but when we return to class, I'll try and tie this together by showing you an actual electric motor. OK, now, um, I would like to show you um, Fleming's right hand rule, but it can be quite tricky to talk about it and using diagrams. So what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to do a separate video that's going to demonstrate to you how to use Fleming's right hand rule. And I'll upload that as part two of this lesson and that will be uh, a bit later on.